Hi everyone, welcome to day two of week 34. Our learning intention for today is to create an explanation for the similarities and differences between organisms to see how species are related. Your agenda is on the left and your work due by Thursday is on the right. By Thursday, be sure to complete your check-in, uh, which on slide 18 says to see Google Classroom. You have classwork slides 20, 23, and 27. You've got two ed puzzles, one introduction to Darwin and another one called Biodiversity and Darwin. Your exit ticket for day two will be on slide 28. Remember that Friday's homework support this week will be from 9 a.m. until 9.50 a.m. It's a little bit shorter because I've got a couple of meetings, but uh, if you need time to review any of your assignments, just email me and we'll set up a time uh, to review. This week's classwork slides will count toward the Digital Interactive Science Notebook category. So be sure to do your best. I'm gonna go on to slide 19, right? 17 and 18 are the instructions and check-in. And so we have talked about biodiversity in the past when we were talking about ecosystems and how you have a stronger ecosystem if you have a more biodiverse community, meaning that you have say in a coral reef you have a wide variety of organisms right you you not only have the corals but you also have sea turtles and you also have sea anemones and you also have you know all sorts of life growing and different types of life and so biodiversity we're going to look at this again but with the the framework of evolution which we talked about last time so biodiversity is the variety of life in the world or a particular habitat or ecosystem. If we break this word up, uh, bio, as you know, means life. Diversity refers to a variety, right? So a variety of life, right? That inhabit, a, that live in a particular ecosystem. Slide 20, you're gonna watch this video and write three facts about the video on the right. Slide 21, we talked about uh, Charles Darwin a little bit in the last video. And so we are going to continue our thoughts about that. In 1835, the Beagle, right, this, this uh, ship that Darwin sailed on across the world, eventually reached the Galapagos Islands, a group of smaller islands in the Pacific Ocean off the west coast of South America. It was on the Galapagos Islands that Darwin discovered some of the greatest discoveries of life forms. He saw a large number of tortoises, tortoises, or land turtles, which he described as immense or big in size. There were also seals covered in fur and lizards that ate cactus for uh, food and water. And so again, here's North America, that's where we are. If you travel, south here is south america there's ecuador in the northwest during region of south america and if you go west toward the pacific ocean that's where the galapagos islands are and right here is a zoomed in image of uh, the galapagos islands where you will see a wide variety of unique looking species so check this out right this tortoise right at the galapagos islands is much larger than what you would find almost anywhere else um and here at the top right, the caption reads, the Galapagos are a group of 16 volcanic islands near the equator, about 600 miles from the west coast of South America. Darwin spent months on foot exploring the islands. The specimens he collected from the Galapagos and sent back to England greatly influenced his ideas of evolution. Galapagos Island fur seal. This, uh, this animal is currently on the endangered species list. Sad. Slide 22. So Darwin uh, observed a few things. He saw that each island on the Galapagos Islands had a slightly different environment. Some were dry, some were more humid, and others had mixed environments. And so he noticed that tortoises these giant tortoises on each island looked different. On one island, tortoises had shells that came close to their necks. They could only eat short plants. On other islands, tortoises had more space between the shell and neck. 
and they could eat much taller plants. So here's the tortoise with the shorter neck and here's the tortoise with the, the longer neck. Then he looked at mockingbirds and finches. Darwin was also curious about the different mockingbirds and finches um, who lived in different island environments. He was surprised to find that many of them were different enough to be separate species. Slide 23. So I want you to notice the image on the left here. Look at these four finches found by Darwin on the Galapagos Islands. Describe the differences in these four birds and why you think they have these differences. Write a minimum of three sentences. This is just a suggestion for your, um, how you would structure this, but you don't have to use this sentence structure if you can come up with your own sentences. So you could say something like, these finches probably have differences, right? We're talking about the different beaks, uh, because blank. It is possible that blank and different birds need blank, which is why blank. So just answer here why you think uh, these differences between the birds exist in three sentences. Slide 24. Darwin was surprised that many plants and animals on the Galapagos Islands were similar to organisms on the mainland in South America. For example, many of the birds on the islands, including hawks, mockingbirds, finches, resemble those on the mainland. Many of the plants were also similar to plants Darwin had collected on the mainland. However, the most important differences between the organisms on the islands were from those on the mainland. You have these large seabirds called cormorants, for example, who lived in both places. The cormorants on the mainland were able to fly while those on the Galapagos Islands were unable to fly. The iguanas on the Galapagos Islands had large claws that allowed them to keep their grip on slippery rocks where they fed on seaweed. The iguanas on the mainland um, had smaller claws. Smaller claws allowed the mainland iguanas to climb trees where they ate leaves. Slide 25. If you want to learn more about the Galapagos Islands, Cormans and iguanas, check out these video clips on slide 25. Let's go to slide 26. So Darwin's theory. Darwin discovered a relationship between species and the food found on the island it lived. In order for a species to survive, they need to eat, right? And so tortoises with long necks lived on islands that had tall cacti. Their long necks made it possible for them to reach high and eat cacti. The tortoises with short necks lived on islands that had plenty of short grass. Darwin was convinced that all the tortoise species were related. He thought they all shared a common ancestor. He suggested that millions of years before, a storm had carried a group of tortoises to one of the islands. Their neck length and shell shape changed to match the island's food sources. Well, how did that happen? Hmm, let's go to slide 27. Darwin knew that individual members of a species have slight differences or variations. A variation is a slight difference in the appearance of an individual member of a species or individual members of a species. Um, variations arise naturally in populations. Right? So I'm going to pause right here. So a variation is a slight difference in the appearance of individual members of a species. So if we're looking at the giraffes on the right, they are all giraffes, they're all part of the same species, but they, there is variation because some giraffes are here um, yellow and dark brown, but others are, you know, white with black spots or you know, it's just a variation. It's, there's a slight difference in how they appear. They occur in the offspring as well as a result of sexual reproduction. You might recall that variations are caused by mutations or changes in genes. Mutations can lead to changes in phenotype. Recall that an organism's phenotype is 
all of the observable traits and characteristics of an organism. Genetic changes in the phenotypes can be passed on to future generations. Define variation in your own words. Take a moment to type that out. What did you learn about Darwin's theory? I'm on the exit ticket, slide 28. And you would say, I learned, and then write two things. And then how is his theory related to animals and plants today? Darwin's theory is related to animals and plants today because, and any sort of questions you have in general, okay? Hopefully that was helpful. Uh, have a great rest of your week and weekend, and I'll see you next week.